I can do a lot with my hacked PlayStation Vita, and I would say that the Vita really is at its height in terms of its usability. Sony has no idea what they created back in 2012, but they made a handle that is even greater marble than they intended it to be. So what is it like using a hacked PlayStation Vita, let alone a regular PlayStation Vita in 2022? I've pretty much been making videos like this every single year, and I figured that this time around it would be a good time to make an update to that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. For more content, do make sure to subscribe to this channel because we upload fairly often and focus on all sorts of tech products. So do make sure to leave us a like and comment any of your thoughts down below while you're at it. It really helps us with the algorithm. And if you want to support us further, then we've actually got a Patreon open, which offers early access to content and special insight to projects that I'm always working on in case that is something that interests you. So links to everything down below. So first, I wanted to talk about the PlayStation Vita, and this is still a very sleek device in 2022. You get a very beautifully designed piece of hardware that could fit into your modern setup just fine. You have some of your best buttons on any handle with great clickiness and maybe not the best thumbsticks out there, but usable nonetheless. You do get triggers, of course, and the 1000 model, which is the one I have here. We have an OLED display to play around with, and it has aged pretty well, since OLED always looks good, but admittedly, the lower resolution of this display does still show in 2022. The PlayStation Vita can play some of the greatest games from the PlayStation 2 era that have been ported or remastered, I should say, such as Final Fantasy X and even Persona 4 Golden. Now, the Vita is known for being a JRPG machine, which is exactly why I love this Vita so much, even to this day, but it is still capable of doing so much more. And now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what I did to upgrade the Vita, but keep in mind that I plan on making a video in the future about building the ultimate PlayStation Vita setup, so do subscribe if you're interested in that so that you don't miss it. I think it's going to be a pretty cool video. So I'm going to talk about the Vita and what I did to it, but this is not a tutorial and should not be treated as such. This is merely a showcase. The first thing that I did was upgrade the memory by getting this adapter that goes into the game cart rich slot, since Vita's proprietary memory cards are still extremely overpriced even to this day. So I included this 256GB micro C card in there, set it up as the primary storage for the Vita so that that way, I can download much more and make use of a lot more storage. And then I use these two apps called Vita Shell and Vita Deploy. Now, if you want a tutorial for how to install these, then I will leave videos to Retro Game Core linked in the description as he made a very detailed guide for exactly how to do this. However, with these apps, I was able to gain further access to my Vita and begin installing emulators like RetroArch and other applications to help enhance my Vita experience. I even installed an app to help me get much nicer themes for the Vita as the original or stock theme for it is not very nice. But there's still a lot more that you could do with this setup. So speaking of which, I set up this Persona 5 skin for the UI and it transitions between the different characters every time that I go between pages, which is just so cool. It even includes music that is exclusive to the skin and the icons change to match the aesthetic of the skin. This is something that I still cannot do on my Nintendo Switch, which is an absolute shame. We are still stuck with the boring dark and light themes, unfortunately, but the Vita does allow for a lot more flexibility in that regard. So when it comes to emulators, I was actually able to download standalone emulators directly from the Vita, which was very useful, but I mostly just stuck with RetroArch and used the different cores to make each given system that I tried to emulate work as intended. But, but for some reason, the PlayStation portable cores that I tried to download for it just were not working or just were not appearing. Of course, because it's RetroArch, I definitely can't, came across a lot of issues, but there weren't things I couldn't get resolved besides that PSP issue that I had. And these are going to be things such as the buttons mapping being all wonky and having to do everything from scratch. And there is a setup to be done through RetroArch, that's for sure. But once you set everything up, pretty much the entirety of the time that you have with your Vita and with RetroArch is going to be fairly seamless as you move forward with it. So what about performance? 
Honestly, I wouldn't expect to emulate much past PlayStation Portable. So PSP, PS1, Dreamcast, SNES, and N64 will be probably what you're going to mostly be aiming for here when it comes to emulation. It's not the most powerful handheld when it comes to emulation, but I would say that the entire beauty of this whole experience is that you do get your Vita games and your retro games in one small, sleek package. For example, I've mostly been using this Vita to play SNES, Shin Megami Tensei 2, because I would like to catch up with the entirety of the series, and it runs beautifully on a standalone emulator. And same thing with Chrono Trigger, as I found that there are some performance issues with RetroArch. Once you get your Vita ready, it will take some time to set up, and most importantly, some time before it's all as you intend it for it to be. So yes, this is fantastic retro handheld, also because of the amazing controls in the system. Again, Sony really outdid themselves with the Vita back then, but it's more noticeable now than ever. So this has been essentially just a pretty short discussion on the PlayStation Vita and what it's like to use it as a retro handheld, even though it didn't talk too much about performance or anything like that. Uh, it's because you shouldn't really expect too much out of it in terms of performance, to be completely honest from what I have tested and from what I have seen. However, if you wanted a much more custom, a much cooler Vita, if you wanted to get the most out of your Vita, hacking it is definitely the way to go. So do you have a hacked Vita of your own? Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you've been contemplating hacking yours, then I would really consider it because there are a lot of benefits to doing so. Soon, I'm going to make a video on the ultimate setup for the PlayStation Vita, since you can use this with your TV. But I'm going to be using the Vita 2000 instead of the 1000 model, the 2000 one is right here for that video, for the sake of some variety. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and soon we will get back to talking about some more retro handheld. So with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I felt like this would be a pretty nice break from just everything that we've been doing on the channel so far. But I wanted to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, beginning with the tier threes, Aliyah, Omar. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really, really does go a long way. And I also wanted to give a special thanks to the rest of the patrons, which are going to be showing up on screen right now. Thank you so much for everything because, it, again, it really does help out quite a lot. And with that said, please make sure to follow me on Twitch, where I do stream fairly often, and on Instagram, where I post every now and then. So, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.